Hey everyone, thank you so much for being here today. My name is Denise, I'm also known as Hey Wig Sister on Instagram and Facebook. Today I wanna to talk with you about hair fibers, wig fibers actually. I want to cover with you some of the pros and cons of all the different fibers that you will find in wigs. Regular synthetic, heat friendly synthetic, human hair. I want to maybe dispel some of the myths. I want to give you a different perspective on some things when it comes to these types of things. And I wanna tell you what my personal preference is based on experience. Please keep in mind, whenever you watch a video like this, most of the information is personal opinion. There isn't any hard and fast rule when it comes to wig wearing. So what one person prefers, another person may abhor. It just is the way it is. And so I'm going to do my best to give you some objective information as well as subjective information just so that you can have as much knowledge as possible as you embark on the wig wearing journey and to help build your confidence. Because wig wearing can be so fun, but it is so incredibly overwhelming in the beginning. So if you wanna know my thoughts on this topic, then stick around. I am excited to talk about this with you. video, I'm actually going to demonstrate what I'm talking about. I'm not just going to talk at you. So hopefully by the end of this video, you will feel empowered with information about all of the different types of fibers and it will help you as you start to narrow down some of your choices. And if you are already in the wig wearing journey and you have experience with all of this, I would be so appreciative if you would leave some of your best wisdom in the comments as well. And it's okay if you disagree with me on some of what I'm going to say here, that's reality. We're all in a different place with different expectations and different preferences. And I don't think it hurts for all of us to share that as long as we caveat it, that it's our personal preference or personal experience, because at the end of the day, people will have to make their own decisions. And I will say one more thing before I get into this, there is no substitute to personal experience. At some point, you are just going to have to dive in and start trying things for yourself so that you can determine what works best for you. And when I get to the heat friendly wig, I'm going to tell you why I think that is critical and that you take everything you hear from other people, including me, with a grain of salt because we're all in a different place with this and you need to find out on your own what works best for you. So let's talk about regular synthetic. The wig on my head is Girl Mono by Ellen Villa in the color Hot Hazelnut Mix. This is a brand new Girl Mono that I have not worn yet. I wanted to make sure I showed you guys a new piece so that you can see a fresh, vibrant, curly piece that doesn't have any of the wear and tear that can happen with synthetic wigs. Now, regular synthetic, some of the benefits of a regular synthetic, they are generally shake and go. You just throw them on. There's very little that needs to be done. Now, that said, I do tons of Tip Tuesdays on my channel, and I am constantly trying to teach you guys how to make wigs your own. Not every wig is going to be perfect for you out of the box, but in general, a uh, regular synthetic shouldn't need styling. You may need to trim the lace if it's a little visible, which on me, Ellen Villa wigs typically are. You may need to pluck a part line in order to be able to see that monofilament like you would like it to be seen, or you might need to add makeup to it in order to hide the knots a little bit on a darker color. You may need to do some thinning or trimming. Those are all things I want you to be very prepared for and not to think that every single wig you purchase is gonna be perfect out of the box. It wasn't made for you specifically. You may need to do some customizing, but in general, synthetic wigs are meant to be shake and go. And so that is a huge benefit to regular synthetic wigs. Another thing that I think is a benefit is the price point. Prices have gone up, there is no doubt about it, and there are some incredibly expensive regular synthetic wigs out there. It's becoming harder and harder actually to be a wig wearer because of the price. But in general, um, you should be able to find a good quality, very realistic looking synthetic for around $150, even still today in some of the budget lines. 
200 to 250 to 300 is most typical, especially since most of the retailers offer discount codes very frequently. You should never have to pay full price for a synthetic wig. There are a couple of lines out there that rarely ever have sales, Henry Margot, Tony of Beverly, but most of them offer coupon codes nearly weekly at about 30%, so you should be able to save some money on a regular synthetic. Some of the retailers also have clearance sites, so you may be able to get one on clearance that's an open box return in still perfect condition. But that is a benefit potentially of regular synthetic is it's a lower price point to get in on a regular synthetic right off of the bat, right from the get-go. Another pro is color choice. You can get virtually any color you can dream of in a synthetic wig. That is also true of heat-friendly synthetic, which I'll be moving on to next. So if you're someone who likes vibrant colors, you like bright, vibrant reds and coppers, you like super chocolatey and deep brunettes, you want to try a purple or a pink or some fun fashion colors, you can get anything in regular synthetic. And that is a huge pro. It is very difficult to find beautiful reds in a human hair wig. And if you can, it probably isn't going to last especially red fades very fast it, um, and brunettes and other colors oxidize due to the sunlight and UV rays. So synthetic wigs have the market when it comes to color. They don't fade a little bit over time, but nothing super noticeable. They don't turn brassy or oxidized. They just may get a little dull, but that is after lots That's and lots That's another of huge pro for synthetic. Some of the cons of synthetic wigs, number one, they don't last terribly long. Now, this is another caveat that I need to give you guys. It's one of those things where somewhat it somewhat depends on your expectation and your personal preference. The general wisdom is that synthetic wigs last roughly three to four months with daily wear. I definitely think that's pushing it a little bit. Your synthetic wig is going to look and feel very different after two months of daily wear one month of daily wear than it did at the very beginning. When you get a synthetic wig, it has a silicone coating on it. It feels so soft, so silky, luxurious, realistic. Out of the box, a lot of these feel like human hair. Unless you're holding a human hair and feeling them both at the same time, they're very deceiving. That coating wears off relatively quickly with wear and you can't replace it. You can purchase silicone products on the market to help soften up your synthetic fibers a little bit, but it will never ever feel like it did fresh out of the box. For some people, that is a problem. I personally have gotten used to it and I love some of my curly synthetics. My, I have a girl mono that's super old, a couple of years, I've worn it over 60 times. It feels incredibly dry, but it still looks really great. And so I care more about how it looks than how it feels. And I, and I encourage you to get to that place as well. As long as it looks good, as long as it looks realistic, nobody's touching your hair, but that is a con. The fibers do start to get really dry and they generally won't last longer than three to four months of daily wear. Some people get six months of daily wear out of their synthetics. Some people get one month. It's just so much of it depends on how you're wearing it, how you're caring for it, what your expectation and preference is. I am not a fan of putting a lot of product on synthetic wigs. I think it makes them dirty faster. I think it makes you have to wash them faster. So there isn't, in my opinion, a lot you can do to extend the life of your synthetic wig other than just to care for it, treat it well, hang it up after you're done wearing, you know, not, don't touch it a lot, don't do a lot that's going to damage the fibers. That is a con of regular synthetic. Another con of regular synthetic in my, this is an opinion, uh, most of this is, is it can be really irritating to the skin. Not for everybody, but I find that longer pieces that rub up on my neck, uh, if it's regular synthetic, it really does irritate me. I just, it's hard for me to wear a longer synthetic because of that. It makes me hotter and it's just uncomfortable. So for some people, regular synthetic is just not comfortable. The, the fibers just don't feel natural when they touch their skin. That can be a challenge as well. And then there's all kinds of things that can happen with different wigs. I would say budget-friendly wigs, 
there's lots of struggles with regular synthetic budget friendly or heat friendly. Most budget friendly actually come heat friendly um, in the fact that they're not often shake and go because they're budget friendly. The cap construction isn't as nice. You don't get as many realistic features like lace fronts, monofilament. The fibers aren't as high quality, so they generally don't last as long. They do typically need to have some customization. So while you can find really nice budget-friendly wigs. I just reviewed one from Lemon Wigs that was $20, but I needed to cut a bang in it and it just needed a little bit of help, but it looked great. So you can find that. It's just not going to last nearly as long as a regular synthetic. So those are the general pros and cons of regular synthetic. My preference, if I want to wear a curly wig, if I want to wear a vibrant color wig, I love regular synthetic. This is my preference for curly wigs and pixies. Let me show you a pixie. This is Ellen Villa. I think it's Desire. It's a, it has a fully hand-tied cap. It's a short pixie. It is so fun. It is so comfortable. It's going to last and last and last. This will rival a human hair wig. So I would say if you are a pixie wearer, um, I don't know if it's worth spending the money on a human hair wig for a pixie because you're not feeling the fibers on your skin. Uh, if you get a good high quality piece, the fibers aren't going to be shiny and you don't have to do any customizing. It's really hard to find a human hair wig that's a pixie. Um, I've only seen like one ever out there being sold on just in on, at the retail sites. So you may need to get it customized if you want a human hair. That will add to the cost. So I think for short pixies, synthetic, perfect. Heat, that brings me to heat friendly synthetic because this will segue us into this one. I also think short heat friendly synthetic are awesome. And so if you find a regular or heat friendly synthetic in a pixie that you love, I say go for it. I think they're awesome. And these hand tied caps make it super realistic. You're gonna pay more for a hand tied cap. That's gonna last you probably three times as long as a regular synthetic, if not longer. So I do think you'll get your money's worth out of it. So let me put on a heat friendly synthetic for you guys. So this, I should have brought, I didn't bring a comb. You shouldn't brush your heat friendly, so don't do what I'm doing, but I'm gonna gently brush through it just to straighten it out here. Um, heat friendly synthetic wigs are very temperamental. The fibers require a lot more care than a regular synthetic does. So this wig is Raquel Welch, straight up with a twist in the color Shaded Biscuit. This is a modified Raquel Welch. This has been trimmed and I've taken heat to it multiple times because I've worn this thing over 60, 70 times, something like that. I've had it for a long time. I got it used and so I've taken heat to it to help maintain those ends. I have a video that I will link in the description showing you how to care for straight heat friendly fibers. I have not mastered curly yet. We'll talk about that in a second, but straight heat friendly that are chin length and above. I don't want you to be afraid of them. I think they're very easy to care for. Let's talk about the pros of heat friendly synthetic. The first pro, I think that they are less shiny than regular synthetic overall. I don't have any issue with shine with wigs. The I rarely ever have a, a synthetic wig that's too shiny for me, but I know some people are very sensitive to wig shine. I think some of that is our brains trying to trick us because I don't think people notice it a lot of the time. I think it often it just looks like healthy hair shine, but heat friendly will tend to be a little bit less shiny than regular synthetic. And so that is a pro. I also think heat friendly fibers feel more realistic overall. There are always exceptions, you guys, to everything. But overall, in general, I think that the heat friendly feel more realistic as well. And I love the fact that you have the flexibility to style it if you want to. You can curl it if you want to. You can straighten a piece or relax a wave pattern pretty easily on a heat friendly piece. So that is also another pro of heat friendly over synthetic. So for cons, I would say the biggest con of heat friendly wigs is they don't last as long as regular synthetic. The fibers are just a little bit more fragile, more temperamental. They uh, react a lot more negatively to friction. And so my preference is to 
get them maybe just above shoulder or chin length and above depending on your neck measurements so that you're protecting those fibers and they're not rubbing up on your clothing taking heat to them regularly which i talk about in the video that i will link in the description will go a long way toward increasing and extending the longevity of your heat friendly pieces my personal preference i love straight chin length and above heat friendly styles they are my favorite when it comes to synthetic wigs. So for me personally, I will purchase a heat friendly piece that's straight over a regular synthetic. I think they look more realistic generally. That's my experience. That's my personal preference. And here's what I alluded to earlier about why I think it's so important that you get your own experience in these matters. In the beginning, I was terrified of heat-friendly wigs. I saw all the negative comments on social media and in the Facebook groups about how hard to care for heat-friendly wigs are, how terrible they are, how you know they, they don't last, all of those things. And so I thought, well, I'm never gonna get a heat-friendly wig. That's awful. I don't want one that's not gonna last very long. I don't want one that I requires so much maintenance that I don't even know how to do. Well, I got myself my first heat friendly piece because I, what I do here, I make videos and so I have to learn these things. I need to force myself out of my comfort zone so that I can help you guys. So I got a heat friendly, short, straight, I think it was um, Belle Tress Bellissima. Love that wig. And I didn't have any trouble with it. I didn't really need to take heat to it very often. The heat I needed to take to it was so simple. It's very easy to care for a shorter, straight piece. And it looked way, it was the best bob I'd had at that point. I had some regular synthetic bobs that I just never quite felt comfortable in. It looked so realistic. It was so comfortable. I'm so glad I tried it. And that's why I say to you guys, don't just take my word for it. Don't look at what other people are saying, many of whom you have no idea what their experience is. You don't know if they even know what they're talking about or if they're just parroting what someone else said to them and start to get this experience for yourself. If I wouldn't have done that, I would have never discovered one of my all-time favorite styles, which is straight up with a twist. I have it in multiple colors. I love this style. It's so realistic. Sure, it feels a little dry now. The ends feel a little dry, but they look so realistic that it doesn't matter. So please note, I'm giving you pros, I'm giving you cons, but you do need to do some of this research on your own and you may need to experience it for yourself to know for sure how it works for you. So to sum up, heat friendly, regular synthetic, so many benefits to them. And I would say for the heat friendly, the color pro that I shared with you on regular synthetic exists for heat friendly as well. Vibrant colors, beautiful hues, and lots of fashion colors. So if you're looking to really expand your color palette and you wanna have fun with color, either regular synthetic or heat friendly synthetic are really great places to start. My one caution before I move on to human hair is I don't personally prefer any, whether it's heat friendly or regular synthetic styles that are shoulder length and below. I just don't prefer the way those fibers feel on my neck. I don't like how quickly they wear with friction. And I just don't think they look or move quite as realistic as human hair. If you can't afford human hair, and we will talk about cost in a minute here, then heat friendly is awesome. Regular synthetic is awesome. And I honestly do not believe most people notice this stuff. You will not have very many people unless you get a really bad budget friendly wig that doesn't look realistic, that doesn't fit your head right. I mean, there are ways to look wiggy with wigs, but I think a lot of the nicer wigs don't look wiggy to other people. They have no idea you're wearing a wig. I'm just sharing with you what my personal preference is. I don't want anybody to feel bad if they can't you know, I, well, I wear long wigs, but I can't afford human hair. That's okay. They will look realistic for you if you work with them and you get the right wig for you. I'm just sharing for my personal preference. I don't prefer them. I don't really love long wigs anyway. So I already have that one strike against them. So now that I have experience with human hair, I know for me, a longer synthetic wig just doesn't cut it for me. But there are so many shoulder length and above super cute styles that you're never gonna lack for options. Let's move on to human hair. All right, so I have on my Luz wig. This is the brand Luz, L-U apostrophe S. 
and I have shared this in the past. This wig I've had for, I can't remember, over six months. I've worn it a lot and it's in perfect condition. It feels just like the day I got it. I purposely wore it today uncurled, unstyled. Well, this one has a little bit of wave left over here, but so that you could see that these can look great even without styling. So let's talk about um, some of the misconceptions about human hair before I go into the pros and cons. One of the misconceptions that I bought into was that the human hair wigs are a lot of work. They require constant styling. They're not shake and go. And um, you really have to have styling skills to be successful with them. I haven't found that to be true. And I own multiple human hair wigs now. And I have for the past year been wearing human hair wigs regularly. And I don't find that to be true. First of all, it depends on what style you're going for. I mean, if you put super curls in like our girl Mono here, then yeah, you're probably going to need to restyle that wig quite a bit because the curls are going to relax. Um, but if you're just putting in like a wave, a beachy wave, or maybe you're putting in a little bit more of a curl, but you don't mind if it relaxes a little bit, you won't have, you may not even have to touch up those curls in between washing. Um, I have had, I just recently to straighten this one a little bit because I want to do a video showing two different barrel sizes of the beach waver. So I'm going to curl this one, but I hadn't put curl in this in a couple of weeks and I'd probably worn it six or seven times. It looked so great and so natural. So I don't believe that human hair wigs are a lot more work. They're a little bit more work than synthetic, but I don't believe that they're a lot more work. One of the other, um, I think it's not necessarily a misconception, but I think it's a uh, lacking context is the comment that human hair wigs are way more expensive than synthetic. Let's think about the reality. Synthetic wigs will last on average three to four months with daily wear. That will vary widely between how you're wearing them, how often you're wearing them, what condition you're wearing them in, what is your expectation of how your wig wears. I know people who've worn synthetic wigs for six months and still wear them and they're fine with them. They certainly have changed. They're certainly drier. The style may have changed a little bit. I mean, you won't get a, a synthetic wig that looks exactly like it did out of the box even three months later, but personal preference is a huge factor in longevity of wigs, but in general, the wisdom is three to four months regular synthetic, two to three months heat friendly synthetic. A human hair wig, if you get a good quality human hair wig, it will last you at least four times as long as a synthetic. So consider that you would have to purchase four synthetics for the one human hair wig. Now we've got more of a price comparison and in many cases today, you just saved money on your human hair wig. You ended up spending more money on your synthetic wigs when you times the price by four than your human hair, depending on what you buy. Again, you guys, I don't want anybody getting in the comments and saying human hair wigs are $3,000. Yes, and some are $1,500 and they're very good quality. So there are exceptions. There's, there's a wide parameter of information here, but I'm telling you the most generalized knowledge that I can share with you. So if you are avoiding human hair because you don't think you can afford it, I want you to think about buying four hum synthetic wigs to the one human hair and how much that would cost you, and then decide if you can afford it. Now, of course, those are bought over time and you may not have the money to outlay all at once, but I don't want, I want you to at least have the knowledge um, of this, this, the, this misconception, which I think is a misconception in, in many cases. Okay, so let's talk about the pros of human hair. First of all, um, it's human hair, so it's super, generally super realistic looking. So if you're looking for something that's going to move like human hair, that's going to look like human hair, if somebody's going to be touching your hair, then human hair all the way. I mean, I think that there is no comparison. I do think that a lot of synthetic wigs are very realistic looking, but there are some conditions that may make it less realistic super windy conditions, different types of lighting can play off synthetic wigs a little bit differently. And so human hair, I mean, it, it's human hair. So there, you can't, you can't deny 
that it's very realistic looking. I just think that most people don't notice. So I think you can get away with a synthetic wig easily and nobody's going to know. But you will. And sometimes just having a human hair wig on your head gives you confidence that a synthetic wig doesn't. I know that it does that for me. And I, I am super comfortable with wigs. I'm super open about my wig wearing. But there are times that I just wanna wear a human hair wig. It makes me feel so pretty and so confident. So that is one of the pros of human hair. I would say another pro is, I mentioned it already, it lasts roughly four or more times longer than a synthetic wig. Again, lots of factors there, but in general. And so when you look at the cost of a human hair compared to the equivalent number of synthetic wigs you would need, it does become a little bit, I don't know if more affordable is the word, because I don't know if any of it's very affordable right now, but I, I think it's more comparable at least in cost. And also the fact that it's going to last so much longer means you don't necessarily have to worry about replacing it as often or as quickly. So, you know, you can buy one. If you get one that you love, you're, you're set for a while. So that's another pro. I would say a con is because they are more expensive, just the outlay in the beginning, it's harder to have multiple human hair wigs. So if you're someone who wants to have different styles for different occasions, if you want to be able to change it up, if you like wearing different colors and sometimes short wigs, sometimes long wigs, sometimes straight wigs, sometimes curly wigs, um, you're going to struggle to do that with human hair unless you are, are wealthy and you have access to good financial freedom because it is very expensive to own many human hair wigs. So that could be a con for someone who doesn't want to change it up. But on the flip side of that, if you're someone who doesn't want to change it up, um, I meant does want to change it up. If you're someone who doesn't want to change it up, you don't want anybody to know you wear wigs. You want to wear the exact same style every single day. It could be a great investment for you because you're going to make that investment over time anyway with synthetic. So you might as well just get it from the very beginning. Not only that, but I know a lot of women who go through so much heartburn with their synthetic wigs when they discontinue them and now they have to try to find another style and comparable color. Human hair, you may be able to get someone to make you a very similar wig. Um, and so that's another option if you really don't want anybody to know and you never want to change it up. A con is that it is impacted by weather. So while I said earlier that I think it's a misconception that you have to constantly style your human hair wigs, you may, depending on the conditions that you wear them in. So if you wear a human hair wig and it rains, whatever style you had is not going to be there anymore, just like your bio hair would have been. If it's very humid outside, you, your human hair may get frizzy, it may poof out a little bit, depending on the, the type of hair that was used. So weather absolutely does impact human hair. So that can be a con, but it can be a pro if you don't want anybody to know that you're wearing wigs. Like I said before, if it rains and you have a synthetic wig on, people are going to wonder how in the world your hair looks so good after that rain and dried so quickly. Human hair, your, your hair will be like everybody else's, so you're not going to stand out. So, you know, a pro and a con in one. And one last thing I want to talk about, but I'm only going to touch on this briefly because I am going to do an, an entire, actually I'm going to do an entire series on human hair once I feel comfortable enough and have enough experience. I don't want to bring you guys half ha haphazard information. That's why I'm getting, I'm purchasing a bunch of human hair, even though I probably shouldn't with the economy the way it is. I want to learn so I can help you guys learn. So the last thing I'll say is that human hair can be really challenging Synthetic wigs are a little bit easier to purchase. There are so many more of them out there. There are so many retailers out there that carry these that it's um, plentiful. And a lot of them have great return policies, or at least a few of them have great return policies. So you can purchase a synthetic wig, you don't like it, it doesn't work for you, you send it back. Human hair isn't like that. Most of the retailers, if they have allow returns on human hair, have significant restocking fees. Um, if you're paying $1,500 on a wig and it's a 15% restocking fee, 
that's a really expensive try-on fee. And so it is more challenging to purchase human hair. It's also less plentiful. A lot of these boutique sellers, so you can go to the major retailers and buy John Renault human hair and Raquel Welch human hair. I personally don't think they're as good as the boutique sellers. I don't think they come in as good of colors. I don't think you have as many options. And I think they're more expensive than for the value. But that is an option for you. But most times, human hair is being sold by small boutique sellers. I'm talking Lose Wigs, where I got this one. In Vogue Medical Wigs, where I got this one, which I will be putting on for you guys here in a second. Um, Madison Wigs is one. Stacked Wigs. I just bought one from Allie at Stacked Wigs. And, you know, she puts drops out twice a week, and she only drops three to five wigs each time. And they usually get purchased within hours. And so it can be really hard to find human hair wigs. That is a con to the human hair wig wearing experience. I also think it's hard because you don't necessarily know the quality that you're getting. There is no regulation on the human hair wig market and you can get some suspect quality and sometimes it's not ethically sourced. And that is one reason why some people won't buy human hair because they don't want to contribute to a somewhat corrupt industry. I think there are some honest players out there and I think there are people who sell high quality, ethically sourced human hair, but you don't necessarily know that and it can be a concern. So while I personally prefer human hair for long wigs, let's maybe, maybe I'll switch out my wig, show you one other and then I'll give you my overall personal preferences. Hang okay, on. Okay, final wig. I think. Yeah, final wig. So this is my In Vogue Medical Wigs wig called Santana. It is a human hair wig. It's a curly wig. I wear this tons. As a matter of fact, I think it's time for a wash. I can see it's starting to get a little weighed down from all of my playing with it. But I, w I wanted to show this one before I give you kind of my final summary here is because you can get curly human hair wigs. This one has been permed, and so it isn't naturally curly, but it's just beautiful, and it requires so little maintenance. All I have to do is spray it with water, maybe put a little conditioning product in it, scrunch it up, and the curls get refreshed. And so if you are a curly girl and you feel as though you may be doomed, I don't consider it doomed. I love curly synthetic wigs. But if you don't want to wear synthetic wigs and you think you're doomed to them because you want curls, you can get permed human hair wigs. I'm seeing more and more available because I think there is a demand for it now. I certainly am demanding it. And um, But you can also have a human hair seller custom make you one they can perm one for you so that is possible and so one last thing then I'll, I'll add to the human hair discussion and then I'll sum it up for you guys is they do it could be a con potentially they do require a little bit more care than human hair or I'm sorry than synthetic they require conditioning so our biological hair receives oils from our scalp that helps keep the hair nourished and and conditioned. That doesn't happen with wigs. So you will want to make sure that you're prepared to care for your human hair wig more than a synthetic. You will have to regularly condition it, use oil on it. You may have never put oil on your hair before, but you do want to put oil on your human hair, especially one like this. With all these curls, it's been what's called premium processed. So when you see uh, seller mentioned that the wig is premium processed. That typically means it's been permed or body waved or something like that. You know, perming, coloring can dry out the hair a little bit. The, the stuff used nowadays is so much better than when I was a teenager getting spiral perms all the time, but it still does um, put stress on the hair. So you'll want to make sure you regularly condition it. I put oil on this hair probably every few days, even or once a week, if I'm wearing it, probably every few days, but if it's just hanging up, maybe once a week if I think about it, um, to keep the fibers feeling soft and not getting too dry. So it does require a little bit more maintenance, but it do I don't believe it requires a lot more. I don't think you have to wash it a lot more than you have to wash synthetic wigs. 
depending on how you wear it, depending on what you do with it, depending on how you want it to look and what products you use on it. Lots of variables as always, but I definitely think you want to be prepared to care for it. So let's sum this up. If you want just a shake and go, you really don't want to think about your wigs. You want to be able to just throw it on, don't think about it, shake it out, pop it on, then either a regular synthetic or a heat friendly synthetic are probably the best for you. If you want to be able to change out your style all the time and wear lots of different colors or wear super vibrant colors, synthetic or heat friendly synthetic may be a better choice for you. If you want to wear long wigs, if the majority of what you're going to wear is going to be long hair all the time, every day, I think human hair is worth looking at and budgeting for. You can do it with regular synthetic and heat friendly synthetic. They are not going to last. I don't think you will get three to four months out of a regular synthetic that's this long that you wear all the time. I could be wrong. And some people are masters at caring for their synthetic wigs, but I think it does take something special to make those last. You can take steam to them. You can refresh them. I mean, there are things you can do with synthetics to refresh them, but a human hair is going to last so much longer if you want to wear a long piece. If you want ultra realism, human hair could be a good thing to consider, but Again, I'm going to do a whole series on human hair and I am going to do a, a video on different cap constructions. How they're constructed will impact realism. So it is not perfect across the board. Just like synthetic though. You know, I've got this short, fully hand tied synthetic here that is so realistic. And if the wind blows or anything, you're never going to know because you can't see any wefting. Whereas if I had a basic cap, synthetic with tons of permatees and no lace front and no monofilament that doesn't look quite as realistic. Similarly with human hair, the cap construction will matter. The hair quality will matter. So there are other factors, but overall, if you want to know my thoughts on this, my preferences, shorter, straight wigs, heat friendly. That's my preference. Chin length and above straight. I prefer heat friendly. Curly, I prefer regular synthetic. And I love me a good curly wig, regular synthetic. Longer, human hair. And honestly, now that I know I can get <laughs> permed curly wigs, I don't know if I can get myself a shorter permed curly wig. I'm, I'm all about it, so we'll see about that. But that's also very expensive. So I think there's a place for everything. I truly think there's a place for everything. And if you are on an ultra budget and you can only for, afford $20, $30, $40 wigs, you can still make this work. You just have to be prepared to work with your wigs. They're not going to necessarily be shake and go. I am doing more and more videos on budget friendly wigs. I want to make sure I have something for everyone. I have lots of tip Tuesdays showing you how to make a wig look more realistic and make it your own. But if you're on a tight budget, you really are going to have to work with those wigs a little bit more and they aren't going to last as long. So you have to be prepared to buy more than one. So let's think about that a little bit. Let's say you can only afford a $40 wig and you want to wear long wigs. You're probably going to have to buy over the course of six months. I mean, if you get a month out of a long $20 wig, that's a miracle. So you're going to be buying a lot of them. Just keep that in mind. Again, it's all relative to what we prefer, can do, and expect. I hope that this helped you guys. I think I caught everything. Again, much more to come on human hair. I just skimmed the surface on human hair. There's so many things to consider. So if you're new, definitely stay tuned to more of my human hair videos. I'm learning a lot. And I, I think, honestly, I'm still in the learning phase. So I may be biased a little bit because I'm still learning. But I'm tempted to say human hair wig wearing is more challenging in many ways than synthetic because the purchasing process is so very challenging. But I think there's something for everyone out there. So if you are watching this video feeling overwhelmed, my heart is with you. I know that you can do this. 
but it is overwhelming. There is lots of, lots of stuff to know. And that's why I put out so many videos. My heart is committed to helping you on this journey. Let me know if you have questions. Let me know if I didn't cover something enough in this video that you need more information on. If I confused you about something, put that in the comment. And if you have experience, please share your experience. If you disagree with me, that's okay. Please share that in the comments. I'm not, a, I'm not perfect. I don't have the ultimate knowledge of all of this. I'm sharing where I'm at in my own journey and what I've learned. But if you have some different perspective, I think our Wig Sisters should know that. And so please don't hesitate to share it. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you guys so much. If you're not already subscribed, I would ask that you subscribe to my channel. It helps so much. Um, YouTube recognizes channels that have high subscriber counts, that have people who return and watch their videos, that have people who like their videos, comment, anything that you can do. It helps me, but it also helps your wig sisters because when they go do a search for a video, if my channel is highly regarded, it might get recommended and then they'll find information that they needed just like you did. Thanks for watching. I'll talk to you guys soon. Mm -hmm.